Hello! <laughs> Welcome to an adventure. Uh, today on Archival Adventures, we will be exploring or continuing our exploration of the um, home remedies, folk medicines, and patent medicines. Uh, so hopefully that's what you're here for. If not, you'll still have fun. Um, before we begin, I have just a couple of announcements, uh, our normal start of stream announcements. Um, I want to acknowledge that the, Tud the Tudlo and Monacan people, who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live, and recognize their continuing connection to the land, water, and air that Virginia Tech consumes. I want to pay respect to the Tudlo and Monacan nations and to their elders past, present, and emerging. I also want to acknowledge that Virginia Tech's Blacksburg campus was previously the site of the Smithfield Plantation. Um, at any point from 1774 to 1865, the Preston family enslaved 40 to 100 African men, women, and children on this land. I want to pay respect to those souls and acknowledge that Virginia Tech is undeniably tied to this legacy. Uh, further, I want to acknowledge that Virginia Tech's Blacksburg campus was previously the site of the Solitude Estate, which enslaved at least 30 African men, women, and children on this land, and acknowledge the contributions of the Fraction family and other enslaved persons in the creation and emergence of Virginia Tech as a major land-grant university. Thank you for... Uh, <laughs> waiting while I read that. Uh, sorry, I've got cords under wheels on my chair. Um, hi, Hannah. Welcome in. Um, yeah, so uh, today, like I said, we're going to be doing another week of um, home remedies, patent medicines, uh, etc. Um, things with the stream are going to be a little bit uncertain over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we had uh, a little bit of uncertainty getting things up and running today. Um, all of the streaming setup has been moving onto a cart so that it will be mobile and can be set up in various places around the university or around the, the library. Um, because this space is going to be, or it is a reservable space in the library. Um, and needs to be open for library patrons. Uh, so I think what's probably gonna happen is the stream is gonna move downstairs and actually be in the archives, um, but it's gonna take a couple weeks to get that set up. So who knows, uh, the table I'm at will get bigger, the camera I'm using will change, the computers I'm using to run the stream will change, um, the backdrop will probably change because I don't have a green screen downstairs. Uh, so it'll be fun. It'll be yet another adventure. Uh, but in the meantime, I have actual things to show off and, and <clears throat> experience on stream with all of you. Um, Sorry, I'm very distractible right now. Um, switch over. Document focus. Uh, there you can see the lovely blue masking tape that I'm using to hold the document camera down. Um, let's just move that off screen. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll start with what I used for the tweet today. Um, which is wizard oil. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we've got about the approximate height and there we go. So as you can see we have a little booklet here. Um, I depend on wizard oil, Catherine Schreiber. Uh, and so we've got lovely bottles of Hamlin's wizard oil. Um, I'm assuming this is Catherine Schreiber posing with the bottles. Um, <clears throat> and so this is going to be a patent medicine, uh, which we've seen a few of. Uh, this is Hamlin, Hamlin's wizard oil liniment. Uh, keep it on hand for emergencies. Remember wizard oil for sunburn to lessen the pain and to facilitate healing after sunburn, apply wizard oil freely. It, if severely burned, cover with sterile gauze soaked in wizard oil. 
Take a bottle with you to the beach, to the club, or out into the fields. Be prepared. Apply wizard oil freely before and during exposure. Um, and you've got a spot here in this booklet to write down the contact information for your nearest drugstore, nearest doctor, and nearest hospital. That lends an air of like actual like medical verisimilitude to this, I'm guessing. Um, I'm unfamiliar with Hamlin's wizard oil. I don't know if it's still around today or not. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick little Google search. There is a, uh, there's a Wikipedia article on it, um, which for general primer information isn't a bad source. Was an American patent medicine sold as a cure-all under the slogan, there is no sore it will not heal, no pain it will not subdue. First produced in 1861 in Chicago. but not a current product today. So I, the date on this, this is from 1900, so it had been around for about 39 years when this booklet came out. Um, wizard oil for sprains and, sprains and strains, rub it in. In every emergency, keep calm. Think fast, but take time to think. It always pays. General instructions. First, call a doctor. It's safest. If things look serious, the nearest doctor. If life seems to be at stake, get the victim to the nearest hospital. Commandeer the nearest automobile. Order, don't ask. Second, call the police. If any act of violence has been done or if you do not know the victim, if a policeman is at hand, ask him to take charge or accompany you. This is for your own protection. Third, call the fire department. Not only in case of fire, but for pull motor squad. Apparently death from electric shock, asphyxiation, drowning, smothering, etc or to rescue victims caught lodged or fallen into precarious places or places hard to reach. Fourth, never stampede. With the crowd from the scene of an accident. Never stampede with the crowd from the scene of an accident. It's safest to be a hero, to wait until you can measure up the situation. Do what you can to overcome panic, shout, Sing, if you've got it in you, laugh. Fifth, read this book and memorize the first aid suggestions given here so that you will always know what you can do. Then keep your medicine cabinet well stocked with fresh material at all times. Interesting. So far, still don't feel like they've advertised the product. I think they're trying to give you bona fides uh, to, to make you think that they've got some medical like authority. They're trying to build authority before they sell you anything. Um, wizard oil for stiff neck or lame back. Rub it in. Fractures, broken bones. You can make certain a slight grit. You can make certain of fracture on hearing is okay. Yeah, slight grating sound. Um, always essential to keep broken ends apart to prevent, yes, yes, apply boards. So put on a splint. I'm not gonna read because it, it is slightly graphic and might disturb some people. Um, so still, just general first aid information, not not even telling you to use their liniment. Um, how to rescue. So honestly, the beginning of this is is 
fairly useful first aid, first response information. Um, how to rescue. Carry a person of, of weight on your back. Tie victim's wrists together, as in figure four. Lift victim onto your back by squatting and doing your actual lifting with your legs as you stand up. Note, your one hand is free while other holds victim's wrists. To rescue unconscious person from gas or smoke-filled room, use the fireman's drag, fi figure six. Victim's hands are tied as described above and slipped overhead. Keep victim and yourself near floor where air is purest. Note, some gases used in domestic refrigerators are heavier than air. Try to determine where air is purest and keep heads there. In contact with electrical current, never walk on ice to save somebody who's fallen through, how to rescue a drowning person. Resuscitation with various causes. And at the top on all these pages, it's giving you uh, wizard oil, keep it on hand for emergencies, for sprains and strains, rub it in. Uh, for stiff neck or lame back, rub it in. Rubbed in, it reduces muscle soreness. For charley horse or deep bruises, Drowning, or sorry, wizard oil for fleas, mites, chiggers, and ticks. Wizard oil for cuts, scratches, and scrapes. All the while just giving you general first aid information um, below that so that it would be something you might want to carry with you um, so that you've got first aid instructions on hand um, and with it you have an ad for Hamlin's Wizard Oil, an excellent wet dressing for wounds, Wizard Oil for golf, shower room, or gym foot. And we're halfway through the book and everything has just been first aid information except the top banner. Wizard Oil first aid for sore muscles, Wizard Oil for skin abrasions and matte burns. And we're still getting, oh, but we're getting more stuff at the bottom about wizard oil. So I'm going to go back and look at that too. So first aid for sore muscles. If you remember Hamlin's, you can forget your feet. Uh, change your groans to grins with Hamlin's wizard oil. Footnote for foot health. Use Hamlin's Wizard Oil. Sunburn suggestion. Give yourself a pat on the back with Hamlin's Wizard Oil. Wizard Oil, the muscle toner. Setting up exercises by the bottle. Join the crusade, fight the plague. <laughs> That's a new one. Uh, for cold in head, inhale steam of one teaspoonful in cup of boiling water. Hamlin's Wizard Oil, a just reward for muscles that have earned it. Uh, Wizard Oil, use abundantly for sunburn. Wizard Oil, for all types of external injuries. Foot ache? Get on a friendly footing with Hamlin's Wizard Oil. Wizard Oil, a proven product since 1865. And finally, after all of the pages and pages and pages of general first aid information, which was their main selling point for this book, um, we have how to use Wizard Oil. Muscle soreness. Muscle soreness due to unusual labor, ordinary neuralgia, backache, strains, sprains, bruises, contracted cords, stiff necks, tired aching feet, frostbite. Apply wizard oil full strength and frequently. 
rubbing well with hands. Action of the liniment is enhanced by covering the parts with a flannel kept constantly warm. Cold in the chest. As a counter irritant for colds in chest, rub the chest briskly with wizard oil until skin is red and heat is felt. Apply night and morning, keeping chest covered with flannel. Burns, scalds, sunburn, hives, fever, sores. To relieve the pain and itching, apply wizard oil freely. When possible, bandage the parts lightly with gauze or linen. Cold sores, canker sores, apply wizard oil freely. That clean, refreshing odor. Pleasant to use, gentle, yet more effective. Cold in the head. Oh, uh, Hannah, so wizard oil is another patent medicine um, uh, advertised as a cure-all. Um, it identifies itself as a liniment, um, but it, it is claiming that it can cure just about anything, just like most of the other patent medicines that we've looked at. Um, cold in the head. Add one teaspoonful of wizard oil to a cup of boiling water and inhale the steam. The process is helped by the use of a paper funnel or by covering the head with a blanket. Minor cuts, wounds, bites, stings. Clean the wound thoroughly with warm water and pure soap. Apply wizard oil in full strength to that wound. Bandage lightly and keep bandage wet with the liniment. Wounds that have been exposed to dirt or dust frequently become infected. Swelling, heat, deep redness with hard throbbing pain are warnings to call a doctor at once. Athlete's foot. For tinea on hands and feet, apply wizard oil morning and night. Use freely, rubbing in well. For emergencies, keep wizard oil always on hand since 1865. Wizard oil in the good old fashioned full measured bottle. Um, and then they have an ad for Hamlin's Brushless Safety Shave, uh, made especially for use with safety razors. Smooth, soft, safety shave spreads easily and evenly and takes the fight right out of the toughest whiskers. It's kind to tender faces, too. You never need a lotion to make your face feel good afterwards. Safety Shave is greaseless. Rinses off the face and off the razor with equal ease. No clogging, no mess. Safety Shave is the kind of brushless cream you have been searching for, hoping for. Get a tube from your druggist and give your face a real treat. Remember the, remember the name, Hamlin's Brushless Safety Shave. So another product by the same company, apparently. And, okay, so the, set, the back of that page is also uh, for the safety shave. I mean, most razors today, Hannah, are safety razors. Um, I mean, because otherwise, if, it, if it's not a safety razor, it's just a, a bare blade. Like when they used to have, uh, in old movies, you would see um, like the razor blade that closed into the handle and they would open it up and it was this big long blade and you had somebody else in it they would scrape it like that was a razor so a safety razor that looks somewhat like this um was a relatively modern invention in the late 1800s <laughs> you use one that's like in the in the ad a single blade yeah a lot of modern ones are like five or six or seven blades um, they, they have gotten somewhat extensive in, in the number of blades, that is for sure. Um, so the back of the safety shave ad, why would, a, why would a wife be interested in the shaving cream her husband uses? A man looks at his face once a day while a wife looks at it critically several times a day. 
Even though love is said to be blind, a wife is the first person to notice the condition of the skin on her husband's face and the first person to appreciate the comfort he enjoys in shaving with a superior shaving cream. American women, though through experience, have become experts in judging cosmetics and their scientific action on the skin. Therefore, we address this to your wife. Safety Shave, a new brushless shaving cream, was made especially for use with safety razors. It is absolutely greaseless and leaves the face cool and clean shaven. Because Safety Shave is not greasy, it will not stick to the face, hands, or the razor. Neither will it stop up drains. Safety Shave leaves the face in perfect condition, with the exception of removing the beard. Safety Shave is not over-scented. There is just enough perfume to leave a clean odor. It is being packed in a large tube so you won't have to be going to the drugstore at inconvenient times. And sells for 50 cents. <laughs> you get a better shave with the single blade over modern razors. Yeah, I think um, it's somewhat personal for everybody as to what works and what doesn't work. Some people prefer the electric shavers now. Some people go for like the, the five or six blades. Um, they even make manual razors that have like five blades and a battery in it so that it vibrates while you're using it. Um, but yeah, they do still sell just the single blade and why not? I mean, is, I'm sure that that works for some people and the multi-blades works for other people and whichever one works best for you is the one you should use. So <laughs> your sister's the one that turned you on to the single blade. It's also cheaper than the modern ones. And that makes sense. Like the modern ones are, are quite expensive for the blade refills. Buy or order safety shave today. Don't fail to enjoy this amazing new shaving experience. Safety shave. Get the half dollar tube at your drugstore. If the druggist is out, if the druggist is out of it, fill in the blanks below. Mail with 50 cents to Hamlin's Wizard Oil Company, 230 West Huron Street, Chicago, Illinois. Hi, Fluten. How are you? So that was Wizard Oil. Uh, let's see, I've got others. I have many, many things. Um, Almanac, oh, this'll be fun. I think we've got this week and next week, and then we will be um, on to another topic. I still haven't 100% decided what. I'm thinking it might be early computers. I'm not sure how much time that will take up, uh, but if we do early computers, I can always, um, you know, once we're done with that, I could go space or something like that. Uh, I still need to go back to architecture and can always revisit the speculative fiction, um, the pulp spec fiction stuff that we have. Um, here we have an item called The Cowboy and Calm Cell Sar. Registered trademark 38725. Written for human beings only. Charlie White Moon, 3729 to 3731 West Broadway, Louisville, Kentucky. I have absolutely no idea, Hannah, why it says written for human beings only. Um, that surprises me. I, I had glanced at this one because I was looking for an image for the tweet, and th that's the first time I saw written for human beings only. So uh, we, we will explore and find out. This is an item from Kentucky. Of what shall a man be proud if he is not proud of his friends? 
Albert Hubbard says, eat less and breathe more, bolt less and chew more, growl less and praise more, loaf less and work more, talk less and listen more, hate less and love more. God gives us sunshine, air, water, roots, and herbs. He tells us in the Bible that it is that if we use them in order that if we use them in proper proportion, diligently and freely, we shall be healed and have health. Let's use them. Unless they mean that the stuff inside is only to be used on or by humans. No, I it, it says written for human beings only. I I I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, this being Louisville, Kentucky, it could be a number of things, not all of them great. Um, it is a very strange statement. Uh, This item self-styled cowboy herbalist. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let's let's take a look through the book and we'll see what we find. To the public and everybody else. My years of experience as a cowboy and among the Plains Indians have given me a peculiar fitness and opportunity to study the healing power of roots and herbs as medicines. I took advantage of every opportunity that presented itself for 11 years, which is seven years longer than the average doctor is required to study to perfect himself in the study of socialized modern, or er, oh, so-called modern medicine. Yet I am not a doctor. Don't call myself a doctor, don't diagnose disease, nor prescribe medicines. I have put my knowledge to practical use by manufacturing medicines for human diseases using nature's medicines, roots, and herbs. Given the time frame and area it's from, they may have meant... That is... Yes, Hannah. Um, given that it's Louisville, Kentucky, and the time frame, this is specifically from 1912. Um, it is entirely possible that they meant that it was for whites only. Um, just given that it's Louisville, Kentucky, 1912, there's, there's a good chance that saying it was for human beings only meant that it was for whites only. Um, if you are a human being, this book is written for you. If not, then it is not intended for you, so don't waste your time reading it. If you don't believe in God or the Bible, don't read it. If you are prejudiced, don't read it. If you don't love liberty, don't read it. But if you are a freeborn American citizen and you love God, liberty, freedom, and all brands and kinds, if you appreciate health, vim, vigor, happiness, and the success that comes from the possession of all these, read it. Then either keep it for future reference or pass it along. Every advertisement that I ever saw for any kind of medicine came from places far remote from the city or town in which the medicine was manufactured. Don't you notice the same thing? For instance, medicines manufactured in Lynn, Massachusetts have testimonials published in its behalf from every place else but Lynn, Massachusetts. Medicines manufactured in Columbus, Ohio, St. Louis, Missouri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania never publish testimonials from their hometowns. Now I have always thought and think now that if a medicine ha and think now that if a medicine has power and virtue to cure, cure disease the people in the town where it is manufactured would be the very first ones to know about it use it and endorse it so in presenting this book and my medicines i am doing so by adopting an entirely different method of advertising namely by showing people in other cities towns and localities that the people who are my neighbors who have known me and my remedies for years, endorse, use, and have been cured by them. No matter where you read this book live, if there is a medicine manufactured in your locality, you know about it. And if its claims are honest and worthy, you know it, 
you use it, you will either endorse or refuse to endorse it. So if the residents of your town, including yourself, give full and free endorsement to a medicine made in your town, you would naturally expect people in other cities or localities to believe in it, have confidence in it, use it. That's the proposition I have to offer you, something never done before that I know of. And if the people of Louisville, Kentucky, my home where I have lived for years, would not endorse my re remedies, I wouldn't expect you to believe in them or use them. I have scores of testimonials from remote parts, that is, other places than Louisville or near Louisville, but I prefer to let my remedies succeed or fail by the verdict of the people who know them best, by the verdict of the people of my own hometown. Have you a friend in Louisville, in Kentucky, in Indiana, any place near Louisville? Then write to your friend, ask about Charlie White Moon and his remedies. Ask what your friends know about Comcell Star, or Comcell Star. I am willing to stand or fall by their verdict. The author is super defensive. Indeed, indeed so, Lord Portico. Hello and welcome. If you don't believe me and my friends about the effectiveness of my medicine, you hate freedom. Um, yeah, we're, I, I highly suspect that this um, person who claims that this book is not for people who are prejudiced is himself quite prejudiced. Uh, just by the caption on the front saying it's for human beings only. Um, what is Comcell Sar? The origin of this powerful remedy is fully explained in this book. Also, the voluntary testimonials of a few of the many happy people made well by its use. Ordinarily, published testimonials refer to people in places far removed from the place where... Didn't we just read an entire page that said exactly the same thing? Why does he feel it necessary to restate it? Uh, or far removed from the place where the medicine is produced, hence are surrounded with a certain element of indefiniteness and mystery as to their originality. These, however, are from people at or near the home office, persons with whom Charlie White Moon lives as a respected citizen and neighbor. These originals, on file at the office in Louisville, Kentucky, can be seen by any and all interested at any time. The cowboy herbalist courts the most diligent inquiry and is only too glad when he learns of people writing to any of his patrons without his knowledge. Write to any name in the published list and send stamp for reply. It sounds very much like a Ponzi scheme. Face palms at the illustration. Aster of hope, com salsar, for sufferers, roots and herbs, the great blood tonic and body builder. Um, and it's sitting on top of a Bible. And on the Bible's cover, it notes that this is copyrighted by C.W. Bunsey, 1911. Um, and there are, there's a bookmark in St. Paul, Ezekiel, and Ecclesiastes. Uh... The components of Comsel Sar, as published on every package, do not only more than comply with the pure food law, but are for self-protection, all being copyrighted, hence protected by U.S. government. The respective ingredients in the order as they appear are as follows. Sarsaparilla, used for many years as a cure for scrofulous afflictions and blood poisoning, especially after the use of mercury. Celery, apium gra uh, graviolans, antispasmodic and nerve remedy. Culver's root, leptandra, mild cathartic. Gentian, uh, gentiana, possesses great tonic properties, excites the appetite and invigorates digestion. Wafer ash, Talea trifoliata, a renowned panacea used for many years in aggravated cases of dyspepsia, prevents vomiting. 
uh, Stilingia, queen's root, a cathartic, displacing mercury in the treatment of blood poisoning. Prickly ash, uh, uh, xanthrozylum, stimulant, especially good for rheumatism. I, Lord Portico, I think, yes, the author claimed copyright over a list of ingredients. Unless he's claiming copyright of the Bible. I'm not sure which. Um, wild Cherry, Prunus Virginiana, celebrated for calming irritation and diminishing nervousness. Uh, Buchu, great as a kidney tonic, used by the hot and tots. No, oh dear, uh, for many hundreds of years base of the celebrated Hindu remedies. So we're definitely getting some terminology um, that would have been in use at the time. Again, it's a historical document, late 1800s. Um, Hottentots and Hindu spelled in that way are not good terms to be in use today. Um, they are generally not acceptable, uh, they're derogatory in use, um, yeah. Mandrake. Literal poison going into this cure-all. Mandrake. Podophyllum. Cathartic and kidney tonic. Mandrake is not good for you. Do not use mandrake. <laughs> <laughs> um, mandrake root is also, is specifically very bad for you, but mandrake, I don't believe... Oh, so yeah, mandrake itself is the root of the plant. Uh, mandrake is the root of a plant historically derived either from plants of the genus Mandragora, found in the Mediterranean, or from other species such as Byronia alba, um, which have similar properties. The plants are called mandrakes. Mandrakes contain deliriant hallucinogenic tropane alkaloids. All species of mandragora contain highly biologically active alkaloids, tropane alkaloids in particular. The alkaloids make the plant, in particular the root and leaves, poisonous via anticholinergic, uh, hallucinogenic, and hypnotic effects. Uh, anticholinergic properties can lead to asphyxiation. Accidental poisoning is not uncommon. Uh, ingesting mandrake root is likely to have other adverse effects such as vomiting and diarrhea. The alkaloid concentration varies between plant samples. So, yes, literal poison uh, going into this cure-all. Um, as a cathartic and kidney tonic. Uh, sassafras, an aromatic stimulant and astringent similar in um, synchona as to chemical constituency. Coriander, coriandrum, aromatic, used largely in blending. I, okay, not sure what used largely in blending specifically means. Uh, dandelion, teraxacum, tonic, diuretic, and aperient has a specific and peculiar action on the liver. Um, dandelion is edible um, and actually is not bad for you. So uh, pomegranate, grenadum, a tainicide, recognized destructive agent for all intestinal worms. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple more ingredients and our first testimonials. Licorice root, uh, glycerisa, a useful uh, demulcent, a recognized remedy for lung irritation, rough membranes, and coughs. Ginger, 
zingiber, uh, stimulant and carminative, highly recommended for colic and flatulency. The foregoing constitutes the actual contents of a package of Comsel Sar, but each and every herb and root is harvested and cured by practical herbalists, afterwards subjected to chemical tests to determine relative proportions of curative agents as named above, then blended and compounded by specialists, so that each and every package is absolutely correct, as stated, in proof of which, enclosed, will be found an order for return of money in the event if, for any reason, Comsel Sar fails to accomplish what it purports to do. Can anyone offer a fairer deal? Not unusual. Cyanide has been used in stuff as has arsenic. Yeah. You've eaten dandelion jelly and dandelion leaves before. Personally, didn't care for the leaves, but the jelly wasn't too bad. I know I've seen dandelion wine, um, and I know that the flowers and leaves together used to be used in making salads. Um, they grow easily and uh, are a healthy source of vegetables if you need them. So for really poor people, they were... They would be a really useful source of food. Um, Mrs. G.E. Belote, uh, is quoted as saying, I, I love, this is so interesting that to have the testimonials, but to have these pictures of people, the pictures are unusual. Comsel Sar has done more for my little girls and myself than anything we have ever taken. We keep Comsel Sar on hand all the time and use it for all our ills. It never fails us. Uh, Edwin J. Lausman of Louisville, Kentucky says, The roots and herbs cured me of stomach trouble with which I was afflicted for two years. I cannot speak too highly of them. J.T. Sanford I am feeling better than I have for years and can eat anything I want. I attribute my good health to the use of roots and herbs and will never use anything else. Uh, and all of these are, all of these names and photographs are on here with accompanying addresses. Um, yes, the author wants it to appear that it's real people. He made a huge argument about contact, these people are my neighbors, contact them, ask them of their experience. Um, to me, it all feels like flim flam. I'm guessing that these people were paid for photographs and that every one of these addresses goes or went to him. I'm guessing that he actually owned every one of these addresses or paid a small amount to each of these people to receive letters for him on behalf of the company. Um, it, it, it sounds very much like a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme um, to where these people basically were just paid to give testimonial to sell the product. Uh, that is how it feels in looking at these. Uh, Unita Moore, Junita Moore, this little girl owes her life to the roots and herbs and now keeps her good health by using Comsel Sar as a preventive. For what it's worth, mandrake here is mayapple based on the Latin name, somewhat related to the European plant. Huh. Thank you, was not worth it. Um... So we get more justification for why this author thinks that his item is the best ever. The average patient or proprietor uh, or proprietary medicines satisfies 20% of its buyers. My medicines, according to standard tests, satisfy 92% of their users and the letters received from them form the highest tribute ever paid to a manufacturer of medicines. If my medicines cure people here in Louisville, where they are known and produced, then you, no matter who or what you are, providing you are a human being, no matter where you live or what your opinions are, should take courage and find sufficient inducement to, the, to at least try. This book is printed to 
prove what COMCELSAR has done and is doing at home. COMCELSAR is pronounced COMCELSAR, accent on the second syllable. The name suggests itself, suggested itself to me because it is a compound of celery and sarsaparilla with 14 other ingredients. The name is copyrighted as a trademark at the Patent Office in Washington, D.C., USA. The Holy Bible is, or should be, the rule and guide of our faith, and no matter what subject you may wish information on, you will find it if you look for it. Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you, says the word. And a great student and writer has said, Study your Bible and nature. They will give to you the key that, I, that will unlock the most profound mysteries of creation, which I surely believe. I ask you to read in your Bible, uh, which I, um, sorry, Catholic and Protestant, Ezekiel 47, 12, Ecclesiastes 30, 14, 15, 16th, and 17th verses, Ecclesiastes 38, 4, 6, 9, and 15th verses, St. Paul to the Romans, 14, 2, Wisdom of Solomon, 7, 17, 20, Revelations 22, 2, Psalm 103, 14. Write them all down as they appear in your Bible, then read them. The maker of a thing knows what it knows best what that thing needs in ways of repairs. So as God made the human body, he knows best what we need in sickness or for repairs and tells us what to use in a few words. Well, at least that's an appropriate use of trademark protection. I mean, it is a combination. So the I don't think he's trying to copyright a list of ingredients. It is the specific combination of those ingredients that was trademarked and, and copywritten. Um, so as far as like copyright and trademark law, I think he is in compliance and, and actually using it for its intended purposes. Um, just like any herbal supplement or multivitamin that you would find today is gonna be a copywritten formula. Um, they may list the ingredients as this has B12 and zinc and whatever other vitamins are in it. Um, that's a list of ingredients, but it's the specific combination of those ingredients that is under protection. Am I anywhere near the mark, Portico? <laughs> You don't know the state of trademark law in the 1890s. Yeah. Some information on drug attenuation and then a lot more testimonials. All of them from Louisville, Kentucky. This one is Wow. All of the others have been like science this, science that, and this one is very much um, the Bible. God made us, God made herbs, so herbs should cure you. Which is very different than some of the other patent medicines that we've looked at. Or copyright law in the 1890s. Uh, it may have changed, but the use of copyright law to protect a list of ingredients in modern times would be dubious. Yeah, and, and I agree, Lord Portico. The list of ingredients, I mean, lists of ingredients are on the label of everything, but the specific combination of those ingredients, the formula used, the percentages and amounts of combination, that would be the proprietary information. That would be the information that uh, that is protected today and I I would imagine it would have been the same then um, like manufacturers share their list of ingredients it's on the side of the package but they don't tell you how much of each thing and in what proportions It would be proprietary, certainly, but not as a copyright. Trade secrets and patent protection, to be sure. Gotcha. So it goes into their photographs um, 
and lots more just testimonials. Looking to see. <laughs> here's, here's a lengthy testimonial. I'll, I'll read this one. Saved from an operation, William Munt. To all whom this may concern, this is to certify that in January of this year, my son William Munt was affected with some kind of blood disease, like scrofula, which caused the glands in his throat and jaws to become terribly swollen and sore. My wife and I took him to a doctor who, after examining the boy, said he should have all the glands cut out, but he is too weak to stand it now, so he cannot live very long. We then took him to a specialist who said, those glands must be cut out immediately or he will die, and he may not stand the operation. We did not like the idea of having our baby cut on, so we went home to study about it, and our neighbor, Mrs. Nichols, uh, told us about the cowboy herbalist. My wife went to him at once, told him about what the doctors had said, and bought from him a box of Comsalsar also some herbs to put on the glands outside. When our baby began taking the Comselsar, he could not eat, had a terrible fever, was poor in flesh, crying and fretful all the time, but he soon began to eat, asked for food. His, his fever left him. He gained in weight. The swelling all went down, and today he is as fine and healthy a baby as any one could care to see. He plays all day, sleeps fine, is in better health than he ever was in, in his little life. And we both feel that the great Comsel Sar has saved our baby's life for us, so that is the reason I am signing this sworn statement to try to induce parents to use the true nature's medicines, roots and herbs, for all sickness. The Comsel Sar is not a dope medicine. It, does not, it did not make our baby sick, was not nasty to take, and only cost us one dollar. Anyone interested can call at our home. We will be glad to testify personally in behalf of this great medicine and the great man Charlie White Moon, who makes Comsel Sar, as we believe him and his medicine to be benef benefactors to our community. I am employed as a machinist at the L&N Shops, South Louisville. Signed, William Munt. So, I mean, this booklet, he certainly got a lot of people together to write testimonials or at least to agree to receive mail and people calling upon them to ask about the veracity of their testimonials. I wonder how many of them didn't know that they wrote testimonials. The testimonials in this book are copies of original letters and statements on file in my office. They are from people representing every respectable walk and station in life in our beautiful city. Louisville, in the grand state famous for its beautiful and good women, courteous gentlemen, genuine southern hospitality, fine horses, and good whiskey, Kentucky. I court investigation. I want you who do not live here to realize that every statement herein contained is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. There, these are in truth but a few of the thousands of endorsements for Comsel Sar for the use of roots and herbs as medicines. These men and women, like millions of others, first cried fake humbug because their doctors did it. They stuck to the doctors, dopes, drugs, and operations till patience was exhausted, fought the use of nature's medicines, roots, and herbs till they had no place else to turn for relief. But one thing is absolutely certain. Everyone who began the use of roots and herbs are now root and herb enthusiasts. Nothing could ever tempt them back to drugs, dope, poisons, minerals, and operations. You will see that it will be the same with you. If you once start using roots and herbs, you will be so well pleased that you will never forsake them and will be satisfied with nothing else as medicines. 
You, reader, must acknowledge that this is the most wonderful array of endorsement and testimony that you have ever heard or seen published, and all coming from the home of the Rever Remedy Advertised. I tell you, it is truly wonderful when you consider how many cities we have in America and the number of medicines manufactured, yet you have... Uh, yet you never seen an array of testimonials like this for the very good reason that so far as I have been able to discover, nothing like it had ever existed before. The past years have proven the power of roots and herbs to cure human disease, that roots and herbs are necessary in bringing about and keeping health abso absolutely indispensable if you would be well. Every package of real, genuine roots and herbs that goes into the hands of a user makes it that much harder to sell other kinds of medicines, harder for the doctor to convince people that poisons or dope are necessary. Roots and herbs are so much better and dependable than that no man can dispute their claims and prove them wrong. Every good Christian man and woman in the world are exerting every energy they command to increase health and decrease energy. Uh, and decrease death and disease. He literally felt it necessary to say that every good man and woman is working hard to increase health and decrease death and disease. The minds of these are beginning to turn and turn surely back in the direction of nature. They are beginning to realize, as was never before realized, that the Bible is true, that God has changed, that nature has not changed, that roots and herbs as medicines have been too long neglected, and I firmly believe that within a comparatively short time, roots and herbs will again claim their just fame and power and will be the only medicines used. He likes to yell. There's a lot of all caps in this document from the 1890s. Then and only then will the human race present, present and possess that vitality, energy, force, and power of health that characterized our ancestors before the days of universal surgery, serums, antitoxins, poisons, dopes, hospitals, infirmaries, and an oversupply of half-baked doctors. Wow. <laughs> Just... Wow. And in the back, there's an ad in the back for something called, quote, science soap, unquote, spelled S-O-P-E. Science soap is a pure vegetable oil soap made for human skin only. Best for baby, mama, and papa, just a pure soap, that's all. But that's enough, for it's practically impossible to get a pure soap nowadays. Science soap is sold only on one condition. It must satisfy the purchaser or I ask the privilege of refunding the money paid for it. Soap sense is clean sense, so common sense dictates science soap for the bath and toilet only. 10 cents a bar or three for 25 cents, it lasts because it's pure and takes so little to do the work. On sale at all drug, grocery, or department stores or mailed postpaid three bars, 40 cents. Good live hustling agents can make a lot selling science soap because when one uses it once, that settles it. One will be content with no other kind, so each bar makes a satisfied continuous customer. Just call for Charlie White Moon's Science Soap. Trade supplied through all jobbers and shipped direct from here. That is definitely a pyramid scheme. He's talking about how much you can earn selling this soap. <laughs> Do not use on vegetables. Um, I don't believe that's what he means. Uh, so again... On the cover here, it says, written for human beings only. Um, just curious whether a search will come up with something of that. Huh. 
So that exact phrase doesn't come up with a, a quick internet search, but I am almost, that's a strange way to spell Amway. Um, I am almost 100% certain that that was code in Louisville for uh, white people only. I'm almost 100% certain. Um, it would take some research to, to figure that out conclusively, um, but Louisville's affiliations uh, historically and around that time with um, the KKK, um, yeah, so that would have been around the time that the KKK was, was highly active in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I, I, it, it just, it gives that feeling that this is probably the references to human beings only is meaning white people only. So, although this is 1912, uh, KKK protests in Louisville were 1870, but that one was certainly interesting. Um, Let's see what else we have. Morning, noon, night. This is from 1870. Um, it's an almanac. A glorious change that any sick man survived the treatment of 50 years ago must be considered a proof that human beings are very hard to kill. The Lancet, Calomel, Cantharides, and drastic purgatives were then the order of the day. The physician played into the hands of the apothecary and the unfortunate patient was drenched morning, noon, and night with prostrating medicines. We live in a more rational and con conscientious era. The importance of supporting nature in its conflict with disease is now understood. Complaints in themselves weakening are no longer aggravated by artificial depletion. They are met with tonics that rally the vital powers and enable them to defeat the enemy. Chief among these allies of nature in its battles with sickness is plantation bitters. Uh, we lose a few words because it's torn. Uh, wonderful vegetable restorative is the sheer anchor of something and debilitated. As a cordial for the aged and decrepit, it has no equal among stomach uh, That is the actual word, stomachics. S-T-O-M-A-C-H-I-C-S. Um, as a remedy for the nervous, uh, as a remedy for the nervous weakness to which the tender sex are especially subject, it is superseding every other stimulant and nervine. In all climates, tropical, temperate, or frigid, it acts as a specific in every species of disorder with, which undermines the bodily strength and breaks down the animal spirits. It goes on in that vein. So here we are looking for what they want to say about plantation bitters. Shattered nerves. The nervous system, I can zoom in a little bit here if you want to see the words uh, more clearly. The font here is relatively small. And this notes, uh, 1860. The nervous system is the seat of motion and sensation, and when it is disordered or weakened, the whole physical and mental organization is more or less afflicted. 
Yet nervous diseases cannot be radically cured by direct application to the nerves themselves. They may be ameliorated for a time in this way, but not eradicated. In nine cases out of ten, complaints of this class arise from a vitiated condition of the digestive and the secretive apparatus. The stomach is a royal organ, and all the other portions of the system sympathize with it, as the servants of a prince sympathize with their master. It feeds and sustains each one of them, even the brain itself, the fountainhead of sensation, and when the stomach fails to discharge its important office efficiently, they all falter. It is a common thing to say that the nerves need bracing up, but they cannot be braced up by external means. The stomach must do the bracing, and to that end it must be toned, vitalized, invigorated. For this purpose there is no preparation extant comparable to plantation bitters. It promotes healthy digestion, strengthens the brain, and, in, and the invigorated brain gives tone and firmness to the nerves. All stimulants give a temporary impulse to the nervous system, but unless their exciting principle is modified by judicious medication, the reaction leaves the individual uh, who resorts to them for relief in a worse condition than before. The effect of raw spirit, even if pure, is pernicious to the stomach and consequently to the nerves. How much more or less of an active poison, and when their first exhilarating effect, wait, how much more so how much more so then must be that of the adulterated liquors of the bar room they all contain more or less of active poison and when their first exhilarating effect passes off the poison begins to work weakening the partially paralyzing weakening and partially paralyzing the assimilating organ and seriously affecting the great sympathetic nerve connection with it the lesser sensitive fibers and the brain let the nervous therefore abstain from dram drinking. Plantation bitters, with its perfectly wholesome, stimulating element, leavened with the most potent tonics of the vegetable kingdom and the juices and extracts of the most valuable aperient and odd autonomous roots and herbs is the grand specific for this distressing ailment. In its composition are summed up all the ingredients requisite to effect a permanent cure. Of all preparations for disorders of the nerves of every type and species, it is the safest and surest and the best. Whew! That's a lot of talking to say, buy our product, it cures everything related to the nerves. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you'll you'll stick with your dram drinking was well, not worth it I mean today we put bitters in with the alcohol let's see what else do we have that sounds interesting here pardon me a better tonic than quinine Mexican Mustang Liniment. This celebrated article has been tested for over 30 years and is found to be the most reliable remedy for flesh, bone, and muscle ailments ever discovered. It is equally adapted to man and animals. The Mexican Mustang Liniment will cure rheumatism, ring bone, chillblains, caked breasts, screw worm, tumors, stiff joints, swellings, Sweeney, scratches, sore nipples, strains, splint, inflammation of the flesh, etc., etc., uh, bruises, sprains, wind galls, neuralgia, gout, wens, spaven, bites, hoof ale, pall evil, sore throat, big head. So if you're ever getting a big head about something, apparently Mexican Mustang liniment will cure that. I don't know what all of these things are. I have no idea what ring, ring bone is, or chillblains, or caked breasts. Uh, screw worm, I can guess. No idea what Sweeney is. Um, 
Wens, Spaven, Paul Evil, Big Head, something referencing occupations on the previous page. Uh, let me look. Oh, unhealthy occupations. I will read that for you. Plantation bitters, a safeguard against their effects. There is a class of complaints which may not imp improperly be called trade diseases. In other words, diseases which are generated by the employments of the sufferers. Among the mechanical op occupations, there are several which are peculiarly unhealthy. Type founders and painters are subject to a kind of colic caused by the absorption through the pores of the poisonous materials with which they have to deal, viz. Lead and, antim lead and antimony. Tailors suffer from the cramped position in which they have to deal, uh, or in which they perform their work, and which tends to produce indigestion, constipation, and spinal disease. Hatters are injuriously affected by the fumes of the sulfuric acid employed in felting and by the vapor exhaled from the hats in the process of ironing. Workers in copper and brass founders are exposed to danger from the deleterious gases um, generated by the heated metals and by hot solder. Tinners and plumbers breathe an atmosphere empoisoned by the vo volatilized oxide of lead liberated in the process of casting and smoldering. Printers and type founders are liable to injury from the poisonous nature of the material they handle. Cotton and woolen mill operatives work in an atmosphere charged with unwholesome dust and being, as a rule, overtasked, the mortality among this class is very large. The list of unhealthy occupations might be almost indefinitely prolonged and ought to include all sedentary employments pursued in crowded and improperly ventilated buildings, but it is unnecessary here to go into the subject in extenso. Now, as it is manifest that in the division of labor the kinds of work that are most prejudiced to health must fall to the lot of millions. The great question is, how can these millions best protect themselves against the evils to which they are exposed? The rational, philosophical, and true answer to this question is by sustaining and increasing the physical and constitutional strength, and thus endowing nature with the capacity to resist successfully the noxious influences referred to. To this purpose, plantation bitters is peculiarly and admirably adapted. It is a vegetable tonic and invigorant of extraordinary e excellence. Its effect is to increase the vital force of the system and to regulate all the functions of the body. Nor is that all. It contains specific antidotes to many of the poisons with which persons engaged in unwholesome callings are brought in contact. For indigestion, constipation, and biliousness, three complaints to which all who are debarred from frequent exercise in the open air are subject, it is a certain remedy and a means of refreshing and reviving both mind and body when suffering from exhaustion. Uh, it surpasses every other medicated stimulant that has yet been offered to the world. Plantation bitters is therefore confidently and on good grounds recommended as an article that no individual or of either sex who is engaged in any pursuit of a debilitating and uh, insalubrious character can safely dispense with. Whew. <laughs> so basically, all of the lovely new industrial jobs are considered unhealthy by, uh, and, but, but not to worry because this, this bitters will cure all of the ills that you'll get from working in any sort of industrial setting or sitting down while you work or, uh, you know, working with fabrics or etc. It fixes anything. Yeah. <laughs> the naked truth about hair. We talked about hair dye from the 1800s last week. Um, and I, I had yet to find a recipe for it, but let's see what this says about hair. And then, 
then I think it's time to see if I can find a recipe for a hair dye. Uh, every man, woman, and child wants a good head of hair. Nothing adorns and beautifies the human form like it, while few things are more un unpleasant, not to say disgusting, than thin, frazzly, faded, harsh, and uncombed hair covering the clothing with dandruff. If people will only use lion's catherion, or lion's catheron, they will have no trouble about their hair. Under its influence, the scalp is kept clean, the necessary and natural moisture of the head is preserved, the hair is stimulated to natural growth, and its roots being supplied with a proper and natural sustenance, its color and luxuriant growth are ensured, and if already faded, returned. No dandruff can gather or stay where lion's catheron is used. There is no humbug about this splendid article. It is not advertised to perform impossibilities, to change gray hair in a single night, or to produce hair where none ever grew before, but it certainly will do what it is what is claimed for it. It will increase the beauty and growth of the hair. It will keep the hair from falling out and turning gray. It will cure baldness where any human power can do it. It will most effectually remove and prevent dandruff. By imparting new life to the roots of the hair, it will restore its original color and in every case where the coloring properties in the scalp are not dead. So if it doesn't succeed in restoring color to your hair, it's because the color properties in your scalp are already dead and it can't do anything for you. So it's your fault if it doesn't work. A word about restoring hair. The stores are full nowadays of articles called restorers, renewers, regenerators, which are all said to restore gray hair to its original color by two or three applications. So far restoring the hair so far as restoring the hair is concerned, they are simply frauds. They do not restore the hair, they dye it. Of course they say it is not dye, but they are dyes and nothing else, and very dangerous dies at that. Let any gray-haired man t try one of these preparations and he will find that they will probably darken his hair, giving it a sticky artificial look which the simplest person can see at a glance is not natural. But if he stops using it for one month, he will find the old gray color coming back worse than ever, showing that it was a dye and has faded or disappeared by a new growth. These articles are all made of deadly poisons, the foundation being sugar of lead, a vir virulent poison. They are based upon old common recipe well known to druggists as Twegg's hair dye. Anybody can make it as follows. 20 grains sugar of lead, two scruples lack sulfur, half an ounce of glycerin, four ounces rose water. Rub the lead and sulfur well together, then add the glycerin and water, shake, well, shake before using. This, with slight variations, is the way all the restorers, review, renewers, etc. are made. Many and many poor victims of paralysis, lead poisoning, neuralgia, blindness, and insanity owe their trouble to the use of these mixtures. Why people prefer Lyons Catheron? Because it eradicates dandruff. Because it is a delightful dressing. Because... what? A delightful dressing? Because it prevents the hair from falling out. Because it prevents the hair from turning gray. Because it keeps the hair in any desired position. Because it keeps the head cool and heals pimples. Because it is cleanly and will not soil the clothing. Because it increases the growth and beauty of the hair. Because it gives the hair a rich, soft, glossy appearance. Because it is the cheapest and is by all odds the very best. Lion's Catheron will restore gray hair by natural and permanent means, if any human invention can do it. It is warranted purely vegetable, contains nothing that can give a false color, and performs its beneficial results by adding new life and vigor to the roots of the hair. It contains no muddy sediment and is warranted free from poison. A child might drink it unharmed. Lion's Catheron is the best hairdressing in the world. Its perfume is delightful, and it imparts a glossy and vigorous appearance to the hair, very beautiful to see. Give it a fair trial, and you will always praise it afterwards. Sold everywhere in large bottles at 50 cents each. Prepared by William E. Everson, New York.
Okay. Oh. Plantation Bitters, sold by Aldrich and Nichols, Putnam, Connecticut. Dealers in pure drugs and medicines, paints, oils, and dye stuffs. Kerosene oil and lamps. Perfumery and fancy articles. Pure wines and brandies for medicinal use. Magnolia water. Superior to the best imported cologne and sold at half the price. Sea moss ferine, made from pure Irish moss, is most delicate is a most delicate, palatable, and healthy food for invalids and children. Blaine mange, puddings, custards, creams, etc., etc., prepared from sea moss farine, cannot be surpassed for a cheap and delicious table dessert. All of the weird juxtapositions of things, I, I find these fascinating. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know if I have a um, hair dye recipe in any of these, but we'll see. I've got a book. Zoom out. Um, see how well these pages turn. This one is extremely difficult to read. Recipe for I'm not sure what it says. So we'll skip past that one. Receipt for rheumatism. Lots of rheumatism res uh, receipts in these books. Gonna see, I'm looking for hair dye. Cinnamon rice pudding, butterscotch tea cakes for toothache, baked custards. I love how the like desserts are mixed in with the medicinal things for colds or feverish complaints. Receipt for a sprain. Receipt for Fanny. For Burmy. To make something very crisp biscuits. Plain and very crisp biscuits. Something, some sort of polish, furniture polish, not sure. I'm, I'm definitely looking for hair dye though. That, that's what I'm seeking out at the moment. I'm looking for a recipe for hair dye. Elder wine. Omelets. <laughs> the the combination of things, the, the fact that they're not like organized in any order, it's just interesting. Receipt for making ginger beer. Two ounces of cream of tartar, three quarters of an ounce of pounded ginger, one pound of
some sort of sugar. I'm not sure what this word is. Um, sugar. One gallon of boiling water, mix it well, let it stand for six hours, then put in a tablespoonful of yeast and let it stand six hours more. Strain it and then bottle it and it will be fit for use the following day. Tie down the corks or they will fly. Uh, the bottles should be held down for the first I'm not sure, 20 hours, possibly. Huh. Anyway, ginger beer. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Cheese pudding, a Dutch dish, good hot or cold. Still looking for hair dye in here. Don't know if there is one. Which is why I'm looking at all of the tooth tinctures. German puffs. Pudding, cake pudding. Mint jelly. Clapham pudding. For rheumatism to stifle sickness. This handwriting is really difficult to read. Uh, just very difficult to read. Receipt for a cough, mange, and then we go receipt for rheumatism, lemon sponge. <laughs> Chapped hands. Swallowing a pin or fish bone. Oh, to, to cure swallowing a pin or fish bone. Four grains of tartar of four grains of tartar of something dissolved in warm water immediately afterwards. Swallow the whites of six eggs. The dose will not keep many The dose will not keep many minutes upon the stomach and will burp up the pin or the bone. So essentially it's a, it's a preparation that's intended to cause you to vomit. It, and it is to be used if you swallow a pin or a fish bone. For the eyes, Strengthening jelly. I'm not sure that's what that says. Scallops, whipped cream, 
oysters in batter, custard, orange jelly, peach jelly, soda cake, Still haven't found hair dyes, but that's okay. I'm still finding interesting things. And it's gotta be great fun watching me try to figure out what all of this handwriting says, because my gosh, why do I keep picking impossible things to read to share on, on screen? Um, oh, is there no more in the book? This one had like half a book left. In the very back, there is a recipe written upside down, like they had started again from the back of the book, for a plain cake. I did not see hair dye in that one. But I am undeterred. I still have plenty of things to look at. This one is called Home Remedies Manual 1921. It's bound in newspaper? It, apparently it is just bound in newspaper. Uh, drying to mix in paint. Itch ointment. Fresh butter. Uh, pitch burgunda. Red Precipitate, uh, some turpentine, <laughs> newspaper, a home remedy for bookbinding. Yeah. Uh, put the burgunda and turpentine together and warm gradually over a slow fire until the burgunda has um, liquefied and then add the butter made soft and precipitate, stirring them briskly together. And that is apparently something you are supposed to put on your skin if you're itchy. I'm not sure what red precipitate is or what burgunda is, pitch burgunda, but Turpentine is not something you want to put on your skin at all. So putting it on to treat itchiness does not seem a good idea. Cure for sore eyes. Um, to a wine glass of pure water, add a teaspoonful of the essence of sassafras. Another cure for sore eyes. Uh, vitriol alba, bole armen, and aqua fontan. I don't know what those are. Salve. Take white pine turpentine, beeswax, and mutton tallow. To cleanse a sore, take sharp vinegar and
sharp vinegar and... I'm not sure. Pantash? Partash? Well, forming, use it. I, I'm not sure what that one is. Um, green liniment. Take two ounces of hog's lard or fresh butter. Uh, one ounce of beeswax, one ounce of rosin, and a half ounce of uh, verdigris. Powdered fine. Melt them all together and simmer them gently 15 or 20 minutes, then cool down to a salve. Cement to mend broken. Uh, they wanted xanthan gum shellac. Boil it together with water and it becomes like a wax. But that one has been um, scribbled over. So I'm guessing they either found a better recipe or discovered that that one didn't work. Green liniment Lo is a lotion, or at least that's what the recipe sounds like. Um, generally, a liniment is something that is rubbed on the skin uh, for application, so that would make sense. Cure for the piles, cure for the jaundice. So the cure for the piles, uh, burn cobs to ashes and sift them and take the ashes, mix it with hog's fat till it becomes like a salve and apply it to the part. Cure for the jaundice, wormwood, gold thread, uh, rue and feather few, few uh, gill grover What? Gil Grover the ground, double tansy, both sorts of cylindine. I have absolutely no idea what those words mean when put together in that way. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means. <gasps> oh boy. Um. Making a salve. Shoe varnish. Receipt to make shoe varnish. Haven't, still haven't found hair dye, but um, the fact that there's shoe varnish in here may, might mean we're a little closer. A half a pint of the spirits of wine, two ounces of Venice turpentine, two ounces of gum shellac, one stick of black sealing wax, powder them and put them in a bottle and put the bottle in a kettle of water and simmer it till it dissolves. To cure the yellow water in a home, house, take a quarter of saltpeter, a quarter of salts, and uh, a quarter of sulfur, and three potions, tartar emetic. So that's essentially um, softening water. So if you've got hard water, it's giving you a preparation to soften the water. Interesting. To cure the home distemp. You take common soap and 
soot and boil them together, thicken it with fine salt and make a poultice, then shear the half of each side of the horns and put the poultice on. If you remember correctly, the one hair dye recipe you've seen from this area used natural ingredients, but from the video you watched, they concluded you were not supposed to wash your hair after applying the dye. Um, from the, I don't remember which, which one it was, one of the ones that we were looking at had an ad for a hair restorer. And the way that, and it was from 1870, I remember the date, but not, uh, it must have been from the Almanac. There was a hair restorer described in there. Um, and based on the way that they talked about dyes, uh, I think you're, you're correct that the dye was something that you applied to the hair and left in. Um, and it, they talked about how it would look sticky and obviously not natural. Um, and that it would wash out after a time. Uh, so awesome, Hannah. If Yeah, if you want to find the link and, and drop that link in the Discord, that'd be awesome. Common varnish to paint green. Yellow ochre. So we got some paint recipes. Mahogany. A bone ointment to cure scratchers. It was from the 1830s. Awesome. I'm always curious about like these old recipes. They're they're fascinating. To cure the scratchers on a horse, simmer tobacco in hog's lard. <clears throat> There's a lot of like, cook this herb in some fat. <laughs> Let's see, drying. To make drying. I don't understand what is drying in this context. To make drying, uh, to two quarts of oil, red lead, a half a table, or half a, yeah, a tablespoon, umber, two ounces, leatherage, three ounces, spirits of turpentine, one pint. These all sound very chemical and not like anything I would want to put in my body. Uh, and some of them are chemical, like that's a varnish that I'm looking at here. A salve. A cure for dysentery. Uh, two glasses of sweet oil two glasses of W.J. Molasses, two glasses of W.J. Rum, simmer them all together, stir them well together, and stir till cold and take a spoonful at a time. Sweet oil, molasses and rum. Some ways to treat ailments in horses. A cure for the blind. Oh, sorry. No, a cure for the blind staggers in a horse. Whenever you perceive it, bleed them well in the spur veins.
and physic them well with tamarack, which will soon cure. To cure a burn, take one ounce of beeswax with four ounces burgundy, uh, sorry, burgundy pitch, simmered in an earthen vessel together with a much sweet oil, as or with as much sweet oil as will soften them into the consistency of a salve when cool. Stir the liquid after taking from the fire until quite cool. Keep it from the air in a tight box. When used, spread it thinly on as on a cloth and apply. Uh, sorry, spread it thinly on a cloth and apply it to the part injured. Uh, open the burn with a needle and let out the water till it heals. Yikes. That sounds very painful. Receipt infallible for the cure of corns. Take two ounces of gum ammoniac, two ounces of yellow wax, six drams of verdigris, melt them together and spread the composition on a piece of soft leather or linen. Uh, cut away as much of the corn as you can with a knife before you apply the plaster, which must be renewed in a fortnight if the corn uh, is not by that time gone. Burgundy pitch is a yellow brown or reddish brown hard viscous resin. Thank you, Hannah. I did not know what burgundy pitch was. <laughs> there are a lot of ingredients mentioned in these books that I'm like, I have no idea what this even is. Let's see. Do we want to look at more recipes or another patent medicine source? Ooh, that one might work. I think we'll do some of both. Why not? We do still have some items that we will not get to this week and we'll be able to do our final week of remedies next week. Uh, here we have the Blanchard system, concentrated nerve and brain building and semi-digested foods from 1875. Let's take a look. Food cure. Trademark. The Blanchard system. Concentrated nerve and brain building and semi-digested foods. For the prevention and cure of disease, particularly of the nervous system and digestive organs. These foods are all manufactured under the supervision of Virgil W. Blanchard, M.D., chemist and originator of the system. Blanchard Food Cure Company, proprietors. Principal Office, 27 Union Square, New York. Parlor, lecture room, and reception room on main floor. Sales room in basement story. Oh, <laughs> it wants to open this way. The Blanchard, concentrated blood and nerve food. Tonic extract of wheat. A form of nerve building food or material that invigorates and sustains without stimulating, meeting a great want in the treatment of chronic disease of the nervous system and digestive organs that has never before been supplied. The vital nutritive elements, the iron, phosphorus, lime, etc., quantities that serve in the highest degree as food to the plastic element of the blood and nervous system that are contained in a bushel of wheat are concentrated into a single quart of this preparation. 
The great value of this food compound consists in the fact that the vitalized condition of the mineral properties that are in the grain has not been destroyed in their elimination from, their, from the exterior of the wheat kernel. Every disease associated with an impoverished state of the blood and nervous prostration will receive from this preparation an immediate and permanent benefit. Dyspepsia, constipation, diarrhea, consumption, and or scrofula in any of its forms, catarrh, rheumatism, neuralgia, all yield to the regulating and nourishing properties of its food elements. During the period of convalescence from the debilitating effects of fever, this preparation is without a rival, and it is the safest and best tonic ever discovered. In the train of chronic diseases peculiar to females, this food first system is nervous stability. This can only be cured by invigorating and energizing the nervous system and food concrete vitalizing food as found in the tonic extract of wheat is the natural means for a sure and permanent relief. A food support for the overtaxed brain and nerve. Whew, it goes on sort of in that vein. Uh, and toward the bottom we have, it was in enough of those recipes. Yeah, yeah, Hannah. Concentrated semi-digested semi compound extract of fibrin and wheat. A combination of concentrated semi-digested nerve and muscle forming food. This preparation affords building material for both the nerve and muscle. Its great value consists in its easily digestible qualities. It having been subjected to an artificial process of digestion, it is thereby rendered fit for the delicate and diseased stomach. It is a pure article of semi-digested food of pleasant flavor and next to the concentrated blood and nerve, the safest and most powerful tonic ever discovered. All of them are the best ever discovered. What else do we got here? Oh, whoa, whoa. It's a booklet. Proper facts. So it, it, it's labeled facts at the top of the page in large font, all capitals with an exclamation point, which obviously means these are actual facts. Proper food in requisite quantity is the only remedy for nervous stability, which underlies all forms of chronic disease. Chronic disease is just because you're nervous. Come on, your nerves are acting up, so you're sick. Not one individual in five of the adult population of the American people has a well-fed brain and nervous system and a sound, efficient stomach. To prevent prevailing dietetic system, or the, the present prevailing dietetic system, does not supply beyond one-third in quantity the proper requisite nerve and brain-building food or material necessary to fully compensate the present and possible activity of the nervous tissue. And as a result, nervous disease is the unwelcome guest of almost every family circle in our land. Even those who escape actual disease lead fractional lives instead of whole ones, being able only to partially accomplish the life work for which they were fitted and endowed by nature. Life force or vital energy has its origin in food, and that food must possess the vital chemical character that will fit it to, a, uh, to fully sustain and supply the waste in the nervous tissue, which is the life awakening and life sustaining organ or engine, the sole fountain of vital activity and energy. You are correct, Hannah. They are not wrong. Proper food does help with general, general health. Hoping it says we should eat more white fish. Uh, I haven't seen any mention of fish in any of these. Um, and then it goes on to claim that uh, women suffer nervous defect more often than men. When was this? 1875. So that makes sense. Um, and then we have 
the Blanchard Semi-Digested Concentrated Extract of Beef and Milk. A concentrated extract of nerve and muscle building material, requiring in its digestion a less expenditure of organic vitality on the part of the digestive organs than any other food material. The great value of this preparation consists in the mild, non-irritating effects of its food elements upon the mucus lining of the stomach and rectum and also in the fact of their having been subjected to an artificial process of digestion, thereby lessening the vital function of the digestive organs in their reduction to assimilable food elements to supply the waste in the nervous and muscular tissues of the human body. This food material, in case of inability on the part of the stomach, is administered by enema to the rectum. Still the form- oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, women were considered inferior. Also, except tuna is good for the brain. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Portico. <laughs> Multiple interrobangs. Yeah. Um, yeah, pre-digested beef and milk that you can administer via enema. Uh, by enema to the rectum till the former organ becomes able to bear it. It is particularly adapted to weakly children and elderly persons summering from organic disease of the digestive organs as a precursory means or stepping stone to the use of compound extract of fibrin and wheat and the tonic extract of wheat. By means of this mild yet efficient dietetic preparation, as a primary means, the digestive organs, though suffering from the ravages of organic disease, may usually be strengthened and repaired so that by substitution at the proper time of the compound extract of fibrin and wheat and the blood and nerve food or tonic extract of wheat, a perfect recovery will take place. <laughs> that is not how, how nutrition works. <laughs> indeed, uh, indeed, I believe you are correct. That is not how nutrition works. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that is the Blanchard Food Cure Company. Your tonic extract of wheat was $1 per bottle. Fibrin and wheat was $2 per bottle. The beef and milk, the one that you can administer via enema, uh, was $2 per bottle. Uh, they ha also had one that I didn't read called carbonaceous food, which is $1.50. Life food, which is basically a protein shake, uh, $1.50. Um, yeah. These were designed and or these were marketed not necessarily designed these were marketed to be fed to people who had ongoing illnesses um, that prevented them from taking solid food so in some ways yes there was a need for easier to digest items these sound horrific it started out so promising, although on balance, it's not honestly that different from some of the more unconventional nutritional approaches that you see on infomercials. I mean, today, if, if this was being advertised today, if these products from the Blanchard Food Cure Company were being advertised today, they would be a fad diet. They would market it as a fad diet as a means for helping you lose weight um, because they've got everything. They've got extract of wheat, they've got fibrin and wheat, they've got beef and milk, they've got the carbonaceous food, they've got life, life food. All of them are supposed to build a different part of your body and strengthen it. This would be a fad diet if it was marketed today. Anyway, uh, I am going to that, that's the last one we're going to look at today. Um, I do want to say thank you to everybody who came by for uh, another adventure as we looked at um, really interesting 
Interesting. Uh, Curious of old uh, on Archival Adventures today. We will revisit Cures of Old again next week. That will be the last week where we have home remedies, folk medicines, and patent medicines. Um, and then in September we will um, do something with computer history or with space flight. I'm not sure which. We might do both. We'll see. Um, <laughs> it was not worth it. I'm glad that you are enjoying it. I'm glad that you came by. I'm going to look and see who we're going to raid today. i um, guessing it might be the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, for those watching, just as a warning, because not everybody's okay with all sea creatures, they do have the moon jelly cam today. Um, so we will be going to Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, and... I hope that you will uh, say hello when you get over there. It is always nice to support another educational channel when I'm doing my educational stream. Um, as always, I will be back next week at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time for another Archival Adventures where we will continue uh, looking at this card of materials that I have for home remedies, folk medicine, and patent medicines, and I hope you will join me then. Um, until then, uh, have a good week. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to raid now and I will see you all uh, next week. <laughs>